Hello and welcome to this video which is going to take you through the process of setting up NetBeans and then installing the Koche library which we're going to be using for our lower 4 IT course. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get NetBeans. I'll go into some background about what NetBeans and Java is as we're as you're watching waiting for the download and the install. So the first thing you're going to want to do is search for NetBeans should come up with a page over here where there's a link specifically to download version 8.0.2. If you go straight to the site, um, you won't be able to find that link. Uh, the download here is for version 10, which I'd prefer you not to use. So look specifically for the 8.0.2 link. You could, if it, if it doesn't come up, just search NetBeans 8 and there it is. Okay, so there's a couple of options you can download here. We're going to use the smallest, simplest option here because we really don't need anything fancy or complicated. So just choose to download the Java SE version. Just wait for this, it'll pop up eventually. Um, I've created an IT folder on my disk. I suggest you do something similar. You can see over there, we're downloading NetBeans 8.0.2. Just wait for that to download. It's roughly 100 megabytes, so that should not take too long, depending on the speed of your internet connection. Feel free to download at school, obviously, if you don't have great internet at home. Okay, and then once that's downloaded, we can run it. So as soon as it starts running, I'll just bring the installer over here. Um, it's install size is about 300 megabytes, but that really shouldn't be an issue. The first thing is the license agreement. Um, you can just accept that. The next thing is an add-on called JUnit. You really don't need it, so just use do not install JUnit. It's not a problem if you do install JUnit, it'll just um, download a little bit extra, but there's really no need for that. Um, it's going to install the NetBeans IDE and then the JDK. I'll explain what those are while it's installing. You can just leave those as the default setting. Check for updates, might as well not, don't worry about that. And then we can install. So this install process takes a little while. So while that's happening, I'll just sort of talk you through what's going on. So we're going to be working in the programming language called Java. So Java is a cross-platform language. It's um, quite popular. It's used a lot around the, the world and it can be used to run on any device. So the idea is you can sort of code something once and then you can very easily get it to run on different kinds of devices. So for example, um, if you're working on Mac or if you're working on Windows, then you should be perfectly fine here to um, uh, run the pro the, the code will work exactly the same way on your machine, whether it's Mac, whether it's a uh, PC, or even if you are uh, working on Linux or something like that. Um, okay. Then NetBeans is an integrated development environment. Um, it's a relatively fancy one. And the reason why I've chosen that is because it's actually going to make life easier for us. Um, so the interface is maybe a little bit more intimidating, but it does make it much easier to actually get going with the programs and we've only got eight weeks so we don't have a lot of time so i want to make this as easy as possible so um we're going to be able to netbeans we'll be able to do basically everything from netbeans you're going to write the code in netbeans you run the code it'll pop up with a window or whatever um, and you'll see the output in netbeans don't get confused and think that we're programming in netbeans or whatever though NetBeans is just the, the sort of the tools that are allowing us to do it. You could, if you wanted, you could open up Notepad, you could type your code in Notepad, then you could um, open up a command prompt and you could run it from uh, the command prompt. We're coding in Java. NetBeans is just the tool that we're going to use to make life easier for us. So um, please don't get those two installed. Sorry, please don't get those two confused. Right, while this is installing, we're going to need another download. So what I suggest you do, well, sorry, what you need to do 
is you need to go to www.funworks.co.za. Okay, um, and then we're going to go to File Downloads, and we want Java files. As I said, we're programming in Java. We're using NetBeans. We're not programming NetBeans. We're programming in using the programming language Java. And over here, um, these are links to various things that you might need, but a lot of them are outdated, and I've taken you through everything you need. So the only thing I want you to download is this thing that's it.zip stored on Google Drive so if you click in it it opens up in Google Drive you could just right click choose save link as but um, otherwise if you click in it it opens this up and the download link is over here in the top right hand corner of the screen so you're gonna download that somewhere and I suggest again put it into your IT folder okay so um, NetBeans is it's finished sort of copying files now just checking that everything happened so while that's happening I'm working I'm going to carry on a little bit over here so go to the IT folder or wherever you decided to put the it.zip file you then need to unzip it e um, easiest way to do that is just right click and choose extract all okay and that'll pop up a little screen like this it'll say files will be extracted to this folder it's fine you can rename it if you want and um, then on Windows at least it automatically pops up a little screen don't do anything with this file you don't click it don't run it you probably won't be able to do anything um, but just don't okay this will take a little bit of time you can see it, it was a 19% before we started that um, now it's on 20% so don't stress out if it does go a little bit slowly so what we're installing here We've got NetBeans itself, which I've explained is the integrated development environment, and that's what is we're going to be doing. And you're also installing something called the JDK, and that's the Java Development Kit. So um, if you played Minecraft um, a while back, then Mine you would have had something called the JRE. That's basically the thing that runs Java programs, and we've downloaded the thing that allows us to develop. So the final step here, it says, would you like to contribute anonymous usage data? You can untick that and then click finish. All right, so we then want to run NetBeans. So um, mine happens to be because of recently added over there. Otherwise, you can just click search. Go for NetBeans. It probably put a shortcut on the desktop as well. We're going to run NetBeans. Uh, it's popping up on my other screen. I'll drag it across as soon as I get the opportunity. So... We now need to um, allow NetBeans to know where that it.jar file we saved was because that's not part of Java by default, so we have to tell NetBeans to use it. So we're going to go to the Tools menu. Then we're going to go to Libraries. And what we want to do is want to add a new library. And I'm going to call that library Hoja. Okay, Hoja is the name of the, the classes that we're going to be using from there. And Hoja is currently empty. You can see i am selected Hoja. I mean, don't click something else and then start changing things. We want to be on the Hoja one. You should be there automatically. And we want to add a jar slash folder. So once we've done that, we want to browse to where we saved our, our folder. And mine is on my F drive in the IT folder. Yours very likely isn't but you know wherever you took it and then this is the zip file don't click on the zip file we want to click on the it folder and there you can see it.jar it's got a little little coffee icon that's the java sort of default icon click on that and just say add jar slash folder and you'll know it's right if it says the it.jar at the end there if you tried to add the zip it, it just won't work then click ok so at this point you're all good to go um, but I do want to just test that so I'm going to take you through how to test whether your installation is working properly um, you probably won't understand too much of what's going on but that's fine because we'll explain it as time goes by so I'm now going to go to go file new project and I would want the default things it's Java Java application um, I clicked on class library it should be Java application 
click next. So I haven't typed in anything there. I'm going to type something in the next screen so don't get confused. So click next. And then over here, we're going to call it something. And I am going to call this project um, schoolwork. You can name it uh, whatever you like. Um, but I'm thinking of just having this one project and then putting all of my projects inside the schoolwork thing. So, so, so that's not a bad idea. And then click finish. And what it will do is it'll automatically create a project for you. It's created one called schoolwork. We're going to create ones with different files, but don't worry about that now. And this is this play button here is the run button. If I run it, you should see absolutely nothing will happen. Um, and that's because... We haven't asked it to do anything. Um, if you don't get a build successful though, if you get some kind of error, then something went wrong with your installation or you did something weird and you like deleted something, whatever. If I tried to run it, you see I, I took a letter out there. If I try and run it now, um, it just immediately says there's a problem. So I'm going to put that letter back. Um, so to test whether the Hocha was installed properly. So you can see over here, we've got package schoolwork. I want you to go to the next line and you type import it, this is all lowercase, dot star. Okay, the star is the same as, it's like the little times thing. It's either on the number pad near the top right or it's usually like shift eight or something. Okay, and if you see, you'll see something right here, this means, hey, I can't find it. And the reason for that is because in our library here, we haven't yet told it we want to use Hocha. So right click on the libraries. We're going to choose add library Hocha. So any project where you want to use it.star, you'll use, um, you just need to add it to the library. You don't need to refine the file or redo any of that. You just can just, like I did there, right click choose add library. You should see it's now a yellow line. Don't worry about what the, the yellow line is. It just means that we're importing it.star, but we're not using it. And then this bit, we're going to go Hocha, capital Hocha. Okay. Um, has to be a capital. And then this can be anything here. So let's just call this test equals new Hocha. Open bracket close bracket, semicolon. Okay, so very important. This has to be a capital Hoche spelled exactly like that. This thing here, you can give it any name you want. I mean, you could put your name if you wanted there. New has to be lowercase or like that. And then this again has to be a capital Hoche. So it's very important you type it in exactly like that. You, I mean, you could get creative there if you wanted. Then if you push the play button, I'll probably have to drag it over you should see this come up here, the Hoche grid. Um, and there it is. It's just there. So um, if you've done all of that, everything is working fine. If you're finding this exciting and you'd like to try and like just um, draw shape or whatever, maybe what you want to do there, this is going beyond the first lesson. So really don't stress about that. You can now do something like test dot. Um, and you can see over here, you have, there's a whole bunch of options. Um, Let's try out the move one, so test.move. See what that does. And it's it's got it on the wrong screen again, but you would have seen the bug would have started here and move forward one. So you can play around with that, see if you can get it to do something exciting.